Hello, everybody. Um, the blood chapter here, chapter 17, um, does not have a tremendous amount of anatomy associated with it. We are going to do a couple of things, though. One of them is blood cell identification, which we're going to have to kind of do virtually, since obviously you guys don't have microscopes and slides with blood on them to help you identify blood cells. But that is what you would do in a traditional class. And then the second thing we're going to do is some virtual blood typing. You're going to see how blood typing reactions work and how that's performed. And you should be able to come out of the blood typing virtual lab um, understanding how to interpret uh, blood typing reactions if they were performed in a laboratory. <clears throat> All right, so blood cell identification here. All right. So probably by now, my recommendation to you would be to, uh, if you have not done so already, go ahead and do the physiology lectures for uh, chapter 17, because that's the bulk of the information for this chapter. And uh, as I mentioned on Blackboard by this point, um, you're not going to have separate anatomy and physiology tests for Unit 2 like we did for Unit 1. You're going to have a chapter 17 test, which includes both the anatomy and the physiology for chapter 17 and then you're going to have a chapter 18 test where uh, chapter 18 is about the heart and you're going to have the heart anatomy and heart function on the same test. I think that's a better way to divide the tests up for uh, for chapter 2. Alright so with the blood so hopefully by now you've already seen this so I can just hit some of the highlights. If you take blood uh, out of a patient and if you just let that sit and let the different components of the blood settle due to gravity. My stylus here does not want to work for me. It's not waking up. Come on. Sort of waking up now. Um, if you let it sit and allow the components of the blood to settle by gravity, or if you, in a laboratory, put the blood into a machine called a centrifuge that spins around really quickly, that basically speeds up the settling properties of, of gravity. Blood separates into three major components. You have your plasma, the liquid portion of the blood. Then you have your erythrocytes or your red blood cells down in the bottom of the tube that are the most dense. And then in the center, you would have a little strip, which would have kind of a straw, whitish color to it. And that's called the Buffy coat, and that's where you would find your white blood cells and your platelets. And so this has all been covered over on the physiology side, and so I'm not going to rehash all of that here. All right, so the formed elements, or more casually, we can call them blood cells. How do you identify those? You know, how is that done in a laboratory if you have to do it? Okay, so what you can do is you take, you can take a blood sample from a patient. You can smear it on a glass slide, and um, then you apply a stain to the blood. Uh, and the type that's, one of the types that's very commonly used is called Wright's stain. Uh, W-R-I-G-H-T and that has a combination of red and blue dyes in it okay and what those dyes do is um, they attach to different types of cellular substances with more or less strength depending on what those cellular substances are for instance DNA which is actually a negatively charged large molecule takes up the blue dye really well. So the nucleus of cells looks bluish purple on these types of stains. Proteins tend to like the pink dye. So parts of the cell where you have lots of proteins, like in the cytoplasm, will, uh, will turn pink. And different cell types, depending on what their uh, components are, will take up these different stains in different amounts, and that gives them different characteristics. All right, so you have these different types of formed elements on your slide. Now, when you look at a slide, a blood smear, the majority of what you see on there will be your erythrocytes or red blood cells. You know, they're going to be over 99% of what you would see on a blood smear. Then your platelets, as we've learned about over on the physiology side, those are little cell fragments. So they're much smaller than everything else, and they're going to be scattered around. All right, and then the more challenging aspect of identification is with the leukocytes or your white blood cells because you have five different types 
but there are certain characteristics of those five types that you can use to help you identify them. And it's not too hard once you get the hang of it. And no, you're not going to become an expert blood cell identifier here with this sort of online activity that you're doing, but I do want you to um, become accustomed to looking at and appreciating the differences between these different types of cells because that tends to help you relate things to their function. So if you're kind of forced to look at these different cell types and realize that they have different characteristics that'll help you out with the physiology side as well. Alright, so here's an example um, stain, blood cell stain, like what you would look at if you were using a microscope in the laboratory and you went up to the highest magnification that we have available with our microscopes that we have in the lab. This is what you would wind up seeing. And um, Now I mentioned that there's a combination of blue and red dyes that are typically used on the slides that we have in the lab. There are other types of stains that can be used as well, so I know you're not seeing as much bluish purple color on this particular image from your textbook, but it is highlighting for you that these different cell types have different appearances. All right, first of all, on the blood smear, the vast, vast majority of what you see, all these things that look like little pink donuts all over the place, those are the erythrocytes, red blood cells. They're everywhere. You'll see little cell fragments, like right there, right there, right there, right there. Those are your platelets. They're very small. Here's another one up here. So they're easy to identify because they're so much smaller than everything else. Then you wind up with your different types of white blood cells. So if you've been through all the physiology lectures, you know that there are five major types. And so here they're showing you example neutrophils, there's an example lymphocyte, and over here's an example monocyte. And so as we'll see, there are, you can see those are, are bigger than the red blood cells. That's one clue that you're uh, uh, looking at a leukocyte. Also notice the darker staining nucleus in each of those cells. Red blood cells don't have a nucleus. All you're really seeing there is the pink cytoplasm which mostly consists of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin takes up that pink dye and gives those cells a pink coloration on these slides. Alright, so the main thing, the hardest thing to learn how to distinguish on a blood smear are these leukocytes. And so as you have heard over on the physiology side, your leukocytes are divided up into uh, two categories, granulocytes or agranulocytes. And your granulocytes, of course, have granules or spots in the cytoplasm. Your granulocytes include your neutrophils, your eosinophils, and your basophils. Then your agranulocytes include your lymphocytes and your monocytes. So these are your five major types. Lymphocytes and monocytes don't typically have large, um, overly noticeable granules in their cytoplasms. Okay, so when you're doing a blood cell identification, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, do I notice any spottiness? Okay, if yes, then you're looking at a granulocyte. <clears throat> if no, you're looking at an agranulocyte. Okay, so that's the first decision you have to make, granulocyte or a granulocyte. All right, if you have a granulocyte, now what do you do? Um, first of all, neutrophils are by far the most abundant of the white blood cells. So when you're looking at a granulocyte, it's probably going to be a neutrophil, not a guarantee, but usually it is. But the chief characteristics of um, neutrophils they have um, smaller pink granules and the nucleus is multi-lobed like you see here multi-lobed nucleus we talked about that over on the physiology side the nucleus kind of looks like a string of sausages or a balloon animal so it's one nucleus but it's divided up into multiple little compartments or lobes so when you see that that's characteristic of a neutrophil all right an eosinophil uh, usually the nucleus has two lobes. Um, these cells can sometimes look like an alien face under the microscope. And the granules are dark red. And they're larger than what you have with a neutrophil. So hopefully you can see the difference between those two types of cells. And then third, the basophils. These are the rarest type of granulocyte. Um, sometimes less than 1% of your white blood cells are of this type which means you could look at a hundred different white blood cells on a slide and still not see a basophil. That's not unusual. Um, 
the granules in these cells take up the blue dye, and so you'll see lots of bluish purplish spots all over the inside of the cell in the cytoplasm. And uh, the nucleus also takes up the purple dye, and so sometimes you can't even really see the nucleus in these cells. It's kind of like right in there where I'm tracing it with the cursor. So big, spotty, blue um, indicates a basophil. All right, what about your agranulocytes? How would you know if you were looking at an agranulocyte? You don't see obvious spots in the cytoplasm. Um, with the right stain, the cytoplasm usually has a sky blue color to it. Lymphocytes are the most abundant. They're your second most common type of white blood cell after the neutrophil. And uh, the nucleus tends to be round or spherical. So you'll see a big dark purple circular area. These, a lot of times, they're not a whole lot bigger than the red blood cells. Many of them are pretty small. And um, you'll see just a little bit of the cytoplasm. So you kind of see that little sliver of light blue cytoplasm or kind of light purplish blue cytoplasm surrounding the nucleus. Uh, that indicates a lymphocyte. Monocytes are bigger than lymphocytes. So if you compare those two, this one's a lot bigger. The nucleus a lot of times has a kidney bean or a horseshoe shape to it and you'll see a lot more of that sky blue type cytoplasm surrounding the nucleus. So hopefully you can kind of appreciate there it's pretty obvious the difference between what a lymphocyte looks like and a monocyte. Now in reality when you're looking at these under the microscope and looking at real ones they don't always follow the textbook examples here but it doesn't take um, you know if you're working in a lab it doesn't take too long to get the hang of identifying these different types of blood cells. Alright so on your uh, chapter 17 test I will have a few questions where I'm going to ask you to recognize um, the different types of blood cells from a blood smear and no they won't be overly tricky I just want you again to get a feel for these different types of blood cells and their different appearances that they have because I think that can help you relate to their uh, to their functions and I'll have some more practice examples for you on a blackboard before you actually take an exam alright so let's take a look at example blood smear number one here let's see if you can figure this out try to figure it out without me telling you what it is first of all um, if you were looking at this blood smear and suppose I had an arrow pointing to that cell how would you identify that particular cell right, that's pretty straightforward you don't see a nucleus it's pretty small you just kind of see a pink sphere there that's going to be uh, an RBC if I can get my stylus to cooperate for me come on <laughs> I promise I really have nice handwriting. It just doesn't work very well with the stylus when I'm writing on my iPad. At least the program we're using doesn't always communicate super well with the computer. All right, that's an RBC or an erythrocyte. What about this little fleck you see over here? Kind of a purplish fleck like that? That is actually a platelet or a thrombocyte, another name for a platelet. Okay, stylus is not cooperating with me, so I guess I will quit trying to write on this particular slide. All right, and finally, what about this big guy here? This is the more challenging one. This is a white blood cell. All right, so I said first thing you want to do is ask yourself whether or not you see spotty granules in the cytoplasm. I would say yes, that looks pretty splotchy. All right, so are they kind of pinkish, red, or are they bluish purple? Um, sometimes that can be kind of tricky, but to me this looks more light pink than a dark bluish purple. So light pink, that's a hint that you're looking at a neutrophil. And then finally look at the nucleus. So this nucleus has one, two, looks like there's a third lobe there, a fourth lobe over here. You can see those little strings right there and right there connecting those lobes. When you see a multi-lobed nucleus like that and kind of light pink granules, that tells you you're looking at a neutrophil. So that one's not too hard. All right, how about this one? Let me see if I can write on this slide now. Uh, what if I had an arrow
All right, what if I had an arrow, <laughs> if I can get it colored in, pointing to this little guy right there, that little purple spot. That's a little purple fleck, so we would identify that as, it's not too hard, that is a platelet. Okay, now how about this one over here? Here's our white blood cell. See how that looks different from the surrounding things. I cannot draw on this screen today. All right, so I'm just going to have to talk my way through it. I'm going to give up here. All right, so take a look closely at that. All right, notice you got the big, round, purple nucleus there. That's a big hint. The cytoplasm surrounding it has a kind of a bluish color to it, bluish purple. Uh, in some cases, it would look sky blue. Okay, so you don't see any big, obvious spots there. So that tells you this is an agranulocyte. And since it's an agranulocyte, that means you either have a lymphocyte or a monocyte in this particular case. Nucleus is round, almost perfectly spherical, and the cell's not very big, not much bigger than the surrounding red blood cells, and you just see a little bit of cytoplasm, so that lets you know that this is in all likelihood a lymphocyte, that type of cell. All right, example number three here. Again, you got red blood cells all over the place. Uh, there's a little platelet hanging out over there by itself. And what do we think this one is? Now, this one is not exactly following um, all aspects of the textbook images. All right. So we certainly see spots there. So that tells us we're in the granulocyte category. Um, the spots look pretty red. They're pretty dark. They're large. They're dark red, dark reddish pink. The nucleus one, two, three lobes. All right, so almost every characteristic is telling us this is an eosinophil. The red spots, uh, they're big. Um, the only thing that's not quite matching is that we said eosinophils typically have a bilobed nucleus where you would only see two lobes and it sometimes looks like a cell wearing sunglasses or an alien face. So these cells don't always follow the textbook characteristics. This is still an eosinophil even though its nucleus does not look quite like the textbook, those big red granules are a major giveaway, letting you know that these are eosinophils. So just spend some time studying the different characteristics of these cell types as you would see them on a blood smear and use the practice questions. And again, we're not going to get, I'm not going to give you super tricky ones where you're having to scratch your head and wring, uh, wringing the sweat out of your hands over whether they're you're looking at a basophil versus a neutrophil, but I do want you guys to spend a little bit of time with this, uh, learning how to recognize these different blood cell types. And then the second part of your anatomy for chapter 17 will involve uh, blood typing. I'm going to post some links to a couple of virtual um, blood typing labs that you guys can do at home, so hopefully those will help you understand how blood typing works a little bit better. So you want to be sure you have watched the physiology lectures um, on blood type, which are at the end of the chapter 17 physiology module, and then work on those virtual labs on, uh, on blood typing. And let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.